A power factor correction circuit is added to a power supply circuit to bring its power factor close to unity and to reduce the harmonics in the input current. This presentation discusses why the power factor correction is required, the basic topologies of the power factor correction circuits and their operations. So without any delay, let's get started. Power factor correction circuits are used to convert AC input voltage to DC output voltage. A simple diode bridge rectifier can be used for this purpose, but instead, we are using boost converters, interleaved boost converters, and bridgeless totem pole converters, with complicated structure and control algorithms. Why we are using these topologies, not a diode rectifier? I'm gonna explain now. This is a diode bridge rectifier which I simulated using PSIM simulation software. I use this simulation example to explain you why PFC is required. Here I have added this particular block in series with the input voltage to measure the power factor. Now let us run the simulation and see the input current and power factor. This is the input voltage and current, and as you clearly see that, the current is not sinusoidal and, it contains lots of harmonics. And if the equipment draws this kind of current from the utility grid, it can create lots of power quality issues. So this is one reason why, diode bridge rectifier is normally not used in power supplies of power rating, more than 75 watts. Now we look into the power factor. Even though here both the voltage and current are aligned in phase, we are getting a power factor of only around 0.5 and this value is very low for a power supply. Normally for the calculation of power factor, we take the cosine of the angle between voltage and current. And this method is only applicable when both the voltage and current are sinusoidal quantities. Here since both the voltage and current are aligned in phase, some people wrongly assume that the power factor is unity. Here the reason why we are getting a very low power factor is because of the distortion in the current. And the power factor is calculated using the equation cos phi divided by root of 1 plus THD the square. Where THD is the total harmonic distortion. And this power factor is generally termed as distortion power factor. If both the voltage and current are sinusoidal signals, then THD becomes zero and the power factor will be just the cosine of the angle between them. Since here THD is very high, we are getting very low power factor. I will open the simulation again to show you the THD values. This block I have added to measure the THD. Run the simulation again. This is the THD value, and it comes around 175%. And this is the reason why we are getting very low power factor. So now I explained why PFC is required. First reason is that diode rectifier takes non-sinusoidal current from the input AC source. And the second reason is power factor is very low. Now we look into different PFC topologies. PFC techniques are broadly divided into two, active PFC and passive PFC. In passive PFC, we use a normal diode bridge rectifier with an inductor connected in series with the input voltage. With the help of PSIM simulation tool, I shall demonstrate the working of passive PFC. So let's open PSIM now. In this circuit, I will connect a 50 milli Henry inductor in series with the input voltage. Now let's run the simulation. Let's see the input current first. Current now look more like a sinusoidal signal. We also see the power factor. Power factor is greatly improved and it is coming nearly 0 0.9. We also see the THD. So after connecting the inductor, THD is reduced from 175% to nearly 10%. Now from the simulation it is clear that, by adding an inductor in series with the input voltage, we can improve the power factor. 
But the problem here is that, compared to the total circuit, we need a larger inductor in order to improve the power factor. This makes the system bulkier and costlier. Because of this reason, this method is usually used in low power applications. Advantages of using passive PFC technique is that, the circuit design is very simple, it has very high reliability, and has low component cost. In active PFC, there are different circuit topologies which are commonly used. The first one is the PFC boost converter. This is the most commonly used PFC circuit with simple control and this circuit can be implemented easily. There are three different modes of operations namely, continuous conduction mode, discontinuous conduction mode, and critical conduction mode. These modes are based on how the current flows through the inductor. This is the most common topology used in low voltage and low power applications due to its reduced number of components. I have already made a video on the design, closed loop control and MATLAB simulation of the PFC boost converter in this channel. You can watch that video for better understanding. I will leave the link in the description. Another commonly used PFC circuit is the interleaved boost converter. Interleaving has the advantage of less current ripple and hence, the low value of input capacitance can be used. This topology mostly used in high power applications. Interleaving also makes it possible to reduce the size of inductors, diodes, and switches since the total thermal stress is low compared to normal boost rectifier. The normal boost PFC and interleaved boost PFC has diode bridge at the input side. Since the voltage drop across the diode is very large, the conduction loss in these diodes are also very high. This makes the efficiency of these converters very low. To avoid this issue, there are few PFC topologies without the diode bridge. And these topologies are called bridgeless PFC and totem pole PFC. I have also made a video on the design, closed loop control and MATLAB simulation of the interleaved PFC boost converter in this channel. You can also watch that video to understand more about the circuit. I will leave the link in the description. This is the basic topologies of bridgeless PFC and totem pole PFC. These topologies has higher efficiency compared to the normal boost PFC circuit. The design, closed loop control and MATLAB simulation of these circuit I will explain in my next video.